Hi folks, right, well we're going to continue our study in uh, Colossians um, with Colossians chapter 4, but we're going on to verse 2. So we looked at Colossians 4, 1, which just says, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. That's what we looked at last time. Um, and we, of course, we, before that, we talked about the responsibility of servants towards their masters. And now we're going to go on to what uh, my Bible titles, Further Instructions. And these are obviously from Paul to the church at Colossae. And he starts off, and I'll just read the section. It's four verses or five verses. Colossians 4.2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make, may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Now, I was reading that from the King James. I'm going to use the New King James um, because it uses just a few more words, a few more modern words in it, just to help uh, people get the understanding of it if you're not familiar with the King James. So, um, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. But clearly, we need to be praying, um, and uh, Paul is asking the church at Colossae to do that, continue uh, praying but also being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. And I think sometimes we, you know, very often people turn to God to pray. I'm not talking about Christians necessarily, though I don't think they are excluded from this, but people who are not Christians who maybe believe or hope there's a God, when they're in a, a real pickle, they will turn and pray. And they pray for their for their needs. They pray to get out of the situation they're in. Um, but the Bible says that when we when we pray, we should pray with thanksgiving. Why thanksgiving? Well, two reasons. One, because we should be grateful to God because he's good and because he's done uh, wonderful things in our lives and for us through, through of course, salvation being the greatest one. But also it's a statement of faith. If you thank God for something, you're not going to thank him for something you don't believe that you received. And though you may not literally have it, when you pray, believe that you have received. In other words, say, thank you, Father. I know not only have you heard my prayer, but you've answered my prayer and given me that which I asked for. If you don't have that thanksgiving in your heart, then maybe you don't have the faith that God has answered your prayer. And of course, if you're asking for something that's inappropriate, you might not have that thanksgiving either. So that can be a witness inside your spirit that God has heard you and answered your prayer. Um, meanwhile, verse 3, praying also for us, that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. Is it unreasonable for Paul to ask the church in Colossae to pray for him? Well, not really. He is their father. He's the person that God used to bring them together, to bring the church into existence, um, and or certainly to disciple them. And therefore, um, it's only right that he should receive uh, from them gratitude, but also assistance. Because Paul is not just saying, OK, I've done my bit. I've brought the people in Colossae to faith in the Lord. I can just rest now on my laurels. No, he is, he says, for which I am also in chains. In other words, he's bound to preach the gospel. And he does use that expression elsewhere. Um, but he specifically says, pray for us that God would open to us a door for the word. So an opportunity, a platform. Uh, how can they hear unless there's a preacher? How can they preach unless they be sent? But we have to go somewhere where the doors are open for people to hear the gospel. And that's what he's praying for. And to speak the mystery of Christ. So the gospel is hidden. It is foolishness, but it's hidden to those who are lost, who in whom the God of this age has blinded the mind of the unbeliever. So not only does he need to preach it, but he needs to preach it under the un anointing, the unction of the Holy Spirit to ears that can hear. Remember, Jesus said several times, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. That I make, may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Now, manifest means to be revealed or to be made clear. And very often the gospel, if you like, is authenticated through signs and wonders, through healings, through miracles, through raisings from the dead, this sort of thing. Or I say is, it was then and it still is in some parts of the world. 
and ought to be amongst us as well. And I think if we're to be effective, then we need to either walk in, you know, the miracles of healings, but also maybe walk in a work of walk in wisdom and words of knowledge so we can speak to people things that only they know and God knows. And he reveals them to us so that we can tell them um, so that they know that God is with us and he's working through us. Um, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time two things there first of all our relationships with those outside the kingdom with the unbelievers we need to walk in wisdom towards them um, we must we mustn't be loose and slack in our in our lifestyles and the way we operate because we are all that they may ever see or hear in terms of having opportunity to be to receive Jesus so it's important that we're not a stumbling block to them and that we walk in wisdom. And that means sometimes, because there are those who are open, their hearts are open to receive the good news, but there are those who are not, not only are not open, but they are anti-Christ. They're against us. And there are times when we should allow ourselves to be um, exploited. Think about Paul in uh, Philippi when uh, he was put into prison, he was beaten, put into prison, but it was for the furtherance of the gospel because all the prisoners that night heard the gospel and repented. So walk in wisdom to those who are outside and redeeming the time. What does that mean? That means making the most of every opportunity. Time, folks, is running out. Um, when I make this, made this video, it was on the 18th of November. I worked out uh, that the day before I was 65 and a half years of age. Now, I know when we get... <laughs> beyond our childhood years we don't normally count the half years um, little children say i'm three and a half or i'm five and a half we don't do that when we get to 20 or 30 do we normally but when we get to our mid 60s and we realize that gosh i'm halfway through another year or i've got one more one less year to live on this earth then that becomes a different matter we start to realize that we need to redeem the time in other words we need to buy it back we need to take make the most of every opportunity once a day has passed in our lives it's finished and then finally let your speech always be with grace so we should speak with, with grace with gratitude but no with gracefulness we should speak gracefully when we speak to people even people who are evil ugly towards us we can still be gracious why because it's the spirit of god within us that gives us the peace and the joy that we have whatever they're doing whatever that wherever they're at we're not helping them if we are like them in that respect and sadly there are some unbelievers who are more gracious than christians in their outward and the manifestation of that grace so always let your speech be with grace seasoned with salt now i eat meat as you know i'm a carnivore and actually salt is probably my main ingredient that i add to all my food uh, i say all my food 90 percent. i don't add it to yogurt but i add it to my meat of all types um, uh, which is my main diet and I'll add it before I cook it, after I've cooked it, maybe during when I'm cooking it. And even after I've served it, I might add ex some extra salt. I do use Himalayan rock salt, pink salt, and it's, it's very nice. Um, and it just brings out the flavours in that meat and it enhances them. And in the same way, I mean, Jesus talked about we are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its saltiness, it's fit for nothing except to be thrown down and trampled by men. So we need to make sure that we are walking in grace towards people and that our conversation is seasoned with salt. And one of the things that salt does is it kills germs. It's, a, it's a, an, an antiseptic. And so, you know, uh, I think it's Proverbs said, or Psalms, one of the two, I can't remember now. Um, it, say, it says that, um, put a guard over my mouth, um, that I, what I speak is only wholesome. And so we need to make sure that's the case. And then finally, that you, na you may know how you ought to answer each person, each one. We don't have to answer everybody who asks us a question. Uh, Jesus didn't. Um, when the woman, they were trying to condemn him for the woman um, or trying to trap him when the woman was caught in adultery, he just ignored them and carried on doodling. Eventually he answered them, but he didn't give them the answer that they, they wanted. Also, when they asked him questions, he would sometimes turn it back on them and answer their question with a question. So he wasn't really answering their question. And when they couldn't answer his question, they say, well, if you're not going to answer my question, I'm not going to answer yours. And so um, he was in control. He was in charge of that. And we need to be the same. We don't need to let people trap us in our words, because believe me, that is one of Satan's best tricks to get us to say things which we later regret. OK, well, that's it. I trust that you're blessed uh, reading and listening to that and you'll continue to uh, meditate in these scriptures. 
and we will continue on by the grace of God next time into verse 7. Thank you.